Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Y'all ready? ready? Welcome to the Upside Down Smiley Show where we talk about real life but we don't take it too seriously. My name is Shireen and I have my friend Izzy here. Hey! Izzy, I've known for a really long time. We okay. met actually when I used to work at Circuit City. I worked at Circuit City for way too long. I worked at Circuit City <laughs> for like four years. Izzy was there for like way four too short. months. And then we just recently reunited for the 10 year Circuit City reunion. Yeah. And now like I feel like you're in my life. Like this girl be texting me every morning with like positive affirmations. Like y'all need to get a friend like Izzy. Izzy, tell them what you're up to. Tell them about you. What I've been up to lately actually, my mission in this world is to inspire people. So. I'm not where I need to be yet to make that happen. So you I... are where you need to be oh. right now. You're right, you're right. Right now you are perfect. Right you're now right. your life is perfect, right? <laughs> My aim is to just inspire and give positivity throughout the day. I think that's important. You know, a lot of us, we go our day, we wake up, good morning, we say, it's a fast rush. So yeah. one little text I feel like makes a big difference. Hey, good morning, have a great day today. So today we're going to talk about homelessness and about Izzy's story with the homelessness and then like the stigma. You have seen my brother's like stories. It's called The Dialogues and he has conversations with homeless people. Yes, he's awesome. And he um, pays them for their time based on like what he gets paid. I have a friend that has gone through homelessness, which I just recently learned about, <laughs> and I kind of wanted you to like share your story. People actually don't realize it because of the positivity I do keep, yeah. which I feel is like a key to getting past that. So yeah, my background was a little bit different. Um, very dysfunctional family, so by the time I was 15, I actually was on the streets. I already knew about the street life before that, but once I was 15, that's when it was like pure survival mode. There was a uh, drugs involved with my family, you know, my yeah. real mom was on drugs, mm -hmm. wasn't a father figure in the home. so. You know, now I, I realize people are people, you know, she dealt with it in the way she could. Yeah. Fortunately, it wasn't a very good situation, so the toxicity from that yeah. uh, kind of brought her to just, you know, turn away from her kids. Yeah. So you go from the system, um, yeah. I did spend a few years in, in foster, the foster homes. System, yeah. yeah, so you go from that, yeah. and you honestly learn survival mode from there, but that's all right. you know. Once you get out of survival mode and you realize you made it through all of that, yeah. you find this gratefulness that, like, I think a lot of us tend to... I don't want to say take advantage of. Somehow I ended up back with my real mom. I wasn't supposed to, but right, like it, it was not a fit. Yeah, home to it be didn't in. happen. Yeah. So just with the drugs and stuff, I, it was very abusive. Uh, yeah. So there was a lot of abuse, and at one point, you know, she threw me out, and she's done it before, but yeah. This time, I said, you know what? I'm not going back. I'm not gonna come back. Yeah. I didn't want to go back to that abuse. It's mental. Right. It's physical. Yeah. It was a lot. So honestly, I already had a rapport outside. So. Yeah. You know, you get into the hood and you learn how to survive. Um, right, like um, you you created this community. Yeah, for sure. And like people are looking out for you better than how you're seeing like your mother taking care of you. And people don't understand gang life and you know, they'd be surprised to know I was in that. But honestly, you get a camaraderie with it. Right, it's a family. It's a it's family. It's like the family that you don't have at home. It is. And honestly, you kind of just learn to mirror what they do. It's It's not really you being your true self. It's you fitting in. Mm -hmm. to the only place you've been able to fit into. I sleep in hallways and stuff. Like, yeah. Couldn't always sleep at a friend's house, so I might sleep in like a building. Might sleep on the park bench in Humble Park. I, I know Humble Park very well now. <laughs> Actually, when you met me, I had just got out of an abusive relationship because that's where I ended up after 17. 15 to 17, I was homeless, and okay. I ended up getting with an older guy. He was uh, 26, right. I was 17. He was, he was like taking <clears> care <throat> of you. Oh yeah, definitely yeah. for sure. And well, that's what you think they're doing. Right, but, but really they're like grooming you. Really, To exactly. be like what you, what they want. Exactly, yeah. so yeah, when you- Because you're young, you're naive, they know oh you can goodness. like manipulate your mind. Yeah, for sure, and mm -hmm. you know, we don't know that, like us that live oh, that. Oh, I did, I've been groomed. Oh wow. Before too, yeah. You're comfortable in this like toxic, chaotic environment, yes. but it feels right because it's like what you know. It's all you know. What was that journey like getting yeah. out of this? No, of definitely, because I think that's like really important. Um, yeah. Honestly, I took it for a long time. Now, mind you, I was 17 when I started this like yeah. crazy journey. Um, after the, a few years, I started realizing who I was. It's mm -hmm. It sounds crazy, but you know when you're done. You know, you know when you finally like have an aha moment yeah. or get tired of the situation. Little by little, 17, 18, 19, 19, 20, 21 is when I started trying to like venture on my own. Yeah. Um, eventually, actually, the turning point for me, he actually broke my leg at one point. Wow. Um, and I was stuck with him for that year though, because I had to learn how to walk again and everything. Yeah. But I swear, like, that was like a big turning point for me. Like, it took for that. And honestly, that's lucky for me, because. Wait, I was just thinking about when you were speaking, like, how many people, like, 
don't haven't had that moment yeah. yet like they're still going through this it makes me think of like the r kelly documentary of like yeah. you know you're just like scared like can i do this alone yeah it's true can you believe do you really believe in yourself and you got to realize like uh people like that we come from starting off our life in toxic situations yeah so, you were born into like a right. family that was not helping exactly and honestly yeah. that's what you know that's the environment you're comfortable in yeah so honestly for me it felt like he loved me yeah uh, he would beat me but it's like oh my gosh but look at everything he does for me i have this roof over my head i was homeless for two years now look at me you know he, said he beats you because he loves you it, and you that's how you feel like yeah like, because he's trying to like yeah <laughs> teach you or yeah. you know especially with him being older than you i feel like you. it's a part of that like oh, he definitely he knows that. better like, he knows like what a relationship's supposed to be because he's older yeah for sure so like you know, that year, it, like, really hit me, like, if I don't leave him, it's going to be worse. This time, it was just a leg. Yeah. So, as I was learning to walk again, I was learning how to reprogram my mind. Yeah. And, you know, I just started telling myself, I can get out of this. Like, yeah. I... I stopped giving it like second thoughts because once I did, that fear would set in. I couldn't be without him. It was actually really crazy when I actually finally left. I had to wait for him to go to work. You're still in survival mode, but like one thing I've learned from my mentor is like, we have to thrive. We can't just survive, you know? Yeah. Like, um, that was a very tough year. That's the year that you know if you're really going to make it. It's like, yeah. I mean, I started off at this point, I was only sleeping on friends' like couches. I didn't really have a place to stay. So it was yeah. like shelter, couches. Finally got me another job that was in Circuit City, uh -huh. <laughs> honestly, and that's, I was able to get a roommate. Yeah. And then from getting a roommate, I was finally able to afford my own place and I brought myself like the most biggest king size bed. Like, yeah. I spent, I, I was so happy with my bed. <laughs> it was yeah. like a big accomplishment for me, honestly. Right, right. We're now on my, my phone. When I was out there, there were times that I would feel like, like one place I spent a lot of time is by Division Ashton, that fountain. Okay. If I didn't have somewhere to go, I'm sitting there. People would, you could tell I wasn't doing so well. And people tend to want to avoid you, and it makes that person feel really invisible. You really yeah, don't know like how they got human. there. Right, and you know what? I do hear people say, well, I don't want to give my money because I don't know what they're going to use it for. Honestly, one thing I say is no matter what, like that person, if you have to give, you know, I'm not saying go out of your pocket, but yeah. once you give, you're giving of your own free will because it's, you know, your charitable act. You yeah. really shouldn't concern yourself with, at that point, like, what you know. What they're going to do with that. Right, if you really feel that person needs the help and, you know, don't let, oh, I don't know what they're going to do with this dollar do. Because that dollar isn't going to make or break you, but it will make or break their day. You can always give sandwiches. Like, I've done that before where yeah. I've walked around downtown with, like, just, like, a bag full of sandwiches. Yeah. It gets cold in the wintertime. They can always use scarves, you know? Yeah. Socks is, like, such an underrated gift for homeless people. You and I'm yeah. sure has, like, blankets at home. Exactly. You got, like, old scarves that you don't use anymore. Like, if you're nervous about the money, then, yeah, maybe that's... And you care, and as we should care. You have no idea people's stories. Like, Izzy went through, like things that she couldn't control yeah and you know honestly the i was looked down upon by like my friends uh families themselves because other moms would be like well what's wrong with her that her mom kicked her out why is she like it's your problem yeah like it was my you'd be surprised the stories you hear like yeah. there's some real value out there that right. is just not looked at because of the way they're living but i mean everybody has a story and like honestly one thing i did want to say anybody going through it just know you can go through like the storm and if you think about it, you survive 100% of your bad days. All of us yeah. that are here, we've gotten through 100% of our worst days. Like, yeah. do not give up. They deal with a lot of self-worth issues because of the way mm -hmm. we're looked at. I'm very positive now because I know what it's like to be very low. Uh -huh. You have to make a conscious decision not to keep yourself there. And every day is a conscious decision yeah. on your mindset. Everyone should feel it, like should think about this. Like, when you're out in public and you see homeless people, do you feel like they are like lower than you? Like think deep, deep inside. Like, do you yeah, feel like that? And if you do think about like what that means, because why are you better than them? That's a great, because wow. you could have had opportunities. You've had privilege. You have no idea what those, that person has gone through in a couple years, in a couple months. You have no idea what could happen to you. You could lose your job. We're all human beings and you should treat every single human being the exact same way. A homeless person, the president of a company, the your waiter, people that are helping you, your cleaning lady, anything. Yes. It doesn't matter. All right. Thanks, girl. Thank yeah, you so no, much for coming. Thank awesome. you so much for sharing your story. Please come join me on the Upside Down Smiley Show. <laughs> do it, guys. Do it. Do it, do it, do, do it. it. Do it. <laughs> Thank you. Bye.